Hey, how's it going guys? I hope this video finds you well as always. Uh, today we are going to talk about cell transport. This is day one and for day one we are specifically going to focus on structure of the cell membrane. We're going to talk about what the cell membrane is made of and um, what is the function of it. Uh, content objective in here, uh, it is to investigate and explain cellular processes including homeostasis. This is a word that we're going to learn today. Uh, you're going to know what the definition of it is today uh, and transport of molecules across a membrane some of the things that students will be able to um, do by the end of this lecture will define homeostasis know what homeostasis is uh, describe the structure and function of the cell membrane so you have to be able to describe what the cell membrane is and what its function is uh, and the Last one is to differentiate between active and passive transport. We're going to probably leave this one for the next lecture, okay, the next time that we do this. Uh, but for this one, make sure that you focus on what is homeostasis and also to describe the structure and the function of the cell membrane. Make sure that you have an essential question on your C notes. Okay, so this is actually a picture of a diagram of a cell membrane, and this is specifically what it looks like inside here. This is what we call the cytoplasm, and the cytoplasm is that part inside of the cell. It's uh, usually made of different um, liquids. And then you have the extra uh, cellular fluid, which is outside of the cell membrane. And that cell membrane is just that uh, separation between the inside of the cell and the outside of the cell. I want you to notice some, some things here, like the phospholipid bilayer, which is all of these little things little circles here um, and all of those lines uh, then you have this blue things that are actually proteins and then you have some carbohydrates some glycoproteins um, some glycolipids as well uh, even cholesterol which is this yellow thing right here but yeah the cell membrane is made of many different things but most importantly you have to remember that it is made of the phospholipid uh, bilayer which is this little things right here which is which are actually lipids we're going to talk a little more about that um, we have talked about digestion already remember that whenever we ingest some foods well some biomolecules that we ingest well they go through the mouth we break them down chemically and um, mechanically and the purpose of all this breaking down is to ensure that we go from polymers into the monomer forms which are simpler so that way, whenever it gets through the small intestine, uh, through the villi, uh, it goes into the bloodstream, and finally, it reaches our cells. Um, and that's what we are currently talking about, the actual, how it is that these monomers, these simple molecules, they go through the cell membrane into the different parts of the cell. So, we have talked about digestion. After the polymers get broken down into monomers, they travel through the digestive system. So what happens to these molecules after they are absorbed? Where do these molecules go? These are questions that we are going to try to answer. So make sure that you answer them uh, once the video stops. So this is all where, uh, where uh, homeostasis come into play. So homeostasis, what is it? Well, I want you to look at this picture right here and see if you can depict what homeostasis is. Homeostasis is the relatively constant internal conditions that organisms or cells, make sure that you uh, put that in there, organisms slash cells, okay? I try to maintain. So that's what homeostasis is, is. It is a balance inside of the cells, what comes in and what goes out of the cell. So cell membrane trans, uh, transport molecules and substances in and out of the cell. The cell requires nutrients to function. So you have to keep that in mind. Um, all of these nutrients are going to be passing through the cell membrane. Whatever the cell needs, they're going to be passing through the cell membrane in different ways. Uh, the cell membrane is what allows all of these to occur. So the cell membrane controls what goes in and out of the cell, 
and maintains homeostasis. The only way that we can have homeostasis is if we have a cell membrane, the cell will depict what goes in and what goes out. Um, obviously, you can uh, can uh, have molecules go in and out of the cell without any type of barrier. If there's not a barrier, then any molecules can go through, even those that you your cells will probably not even need. So yes, you do have to provide that barrier between the inside and the outside of the cell, and that's what the cell membrane does. It provides a barrier. So a uh, couple of words uh, that you going to have to know the definition of. The first one is going to be permeability. Uh, permeability really, you have to understand what permeable means. So permeable is that the membrane allows materials to pass through it. Uh, anything that is permeable, obviously, it just allows things to go through them. Um, impermeable, obviously, adding that in, uh, I am at the beginning of the word permeable, that will probably mean that the membrane does not allow materials to pass through. Uh, and sometimes there's, we're going to have a word that's going to be semi-permeable, which means selectively permeable. It's the same thing. Uh, membranes allow some materials to pass through, but not others. So these three are different words that you have to understand the difference to. Permeable, uh, anything can go through it, or the cell membrane allows things to go through it. Impermeable means that no, nothing can go through that cell membrane. Then semi-permeable means uh, the same thing as selectively permeable. And that basically is that only some things will be allowed to go through the cell membrane. Most of the time, okay, cells are going to be selectively permeable. They're going to be semi permeable. These membranes will be semi-permeable because obviously uh, cells are not going to allow every single molecule to just go past uh, through it. Uh, only those that the cell membrane needs are the ones that are going to go through them. Uh, kind of like this little picture right here. Um, you are uh, only want the water to go through it. However, you want the pasta to stay through. So you use that colander to ensure that um, the pasta stays in place uh, and the water goes through it. So kind of the same way, just to give you an idea of how cell membranes work, uh, okay? Uh, what the cell membrane is made of, well, the cell membrane is composed of what we call a phospholipid bilayer. Bilayer, bi means two, so you have to understand that there's two layers of phospholipid lipids there's one on the outside so remember this is the outside of the cell there's one layer here and then another layer here and, and on the inside of the cell and they're kind of facing each other like that so this is what we call the phospholipid bilayer two layers of lipids pretty much uh, some vocabulary here that you have to understand is that the head of the phospholipid and this is what they look like they have that head and then they have this uh, tails that look like this. The head of the phospholipid is what we call hydrophilic. Okay, and hydrophilic, philic comes from the word loving. Okay, so hydrophilic means that the head of the um, cell membrane will actually love water and will attract water to go past it. However, the tails are going to be hydrophobic. Uh, and phobic, like a phobia, means that you have a fear. So the tails, which are these little things here, if you look at them, they are, if you look at my mouse, they are right there, those little tails, they actually hate the water. They kind of work like oil. Oil hates water. Um, so those are the two different parts of this phospholipid, uh, phospholipids that make up the cell membrane. One of them is hydrophilic, which means that they love water. They're polar. They're going to love water, and that's the head. And then the tails are hydrophobic, um, these tails right here, which means that they're going to uh, fear water, they repel water. Uh, the phospholipid makes two rows, by, which obviously makes it a bilayer. Uh, the head's on the outside, and then there are tails on the inside. So these are the tails on the inside there, and then these are the heads on the outside. 
And the same happens on this side of the cell, on the inside of the cell. You have the tails on in, this, in the inside, and then you have all those heads on the inside part of the cell. Okay, so it's a phospholipid. It's two layers. A um, little bit more about it. Uh, your picture here labels a hydrophilic uh, head and hydrophobic uh, tail. It's going to have some questions, but just to let you know, this one right here will be the head. And then right here, you have the tails. Whoops, kind of went a little too quick there. So let me start again. These are the heads of the um, phospholipids, and we call that phospholipid because it actually has phosphate in it, it has that, that P for phosphorus, uh, by the way. And then you have your tails, which are really just carbon. Uh, you see the carbons and hydrogens all attached to them, kind of like a um, you know, those carbohydrates, um, I'm sorry, the lipids that we've been talking about, but it just has a, um, a phosphorus attached at the very top. And then you have these, which are the tails. Okay? You have to label them. Um, the following are embedded in the cell membrane. So the cell membrane, like I said at the beginning, has more than just the phospholipid bilayer. It has proteins, which actually form protein channels. We're going to talk a little bit more about on the next lecture. Uh, and these are used to move materials in and out of the cell. So these protein channels are used to move different materials out, in and out. There's also, also a little bit of carbohydrates found uh, in the cell membrane. And uh, it actually helps the cell identify chemicals, uh, signals, and other cells. So you have sometimes those carbohydrates that look like this. Um, and those right there, those are gonna be carbohydrates. Uh, and they're going to help the cell identify different chemical signals. Uh, and also you have cholesterol, which is those yellow ones right there. See them attached to the inside of the cell. And that cholesterol will allow the membrane to be fluid, to stay kind of soft, okay? And let things in and out. Um, going to be doing an assignment uh, shortly, and that assignment will require you to paint some of these different parts. Just keep in mind that you will have to use uh, a different uh, color code for each of the different parts. So you see the proteins, they're going to be the purple ones. Carbohydrates are all the greens. Um, cholesterol, you have yellow right there. Uh, and then the phospholipid bilayer, you have the head, which is this one's right here. I don't know why it says red. It will, probably going to have to color it red and then you have the the hydrophilic uh, hydrophobic tails which are these right here you're going to have to color them orange okay so you will follow uh, probably a different color set in the assignment maybe you will use this one if you want to okay so this is all that we probably need to know about the cell membrane guys if remember the different parts and try to write a summary for your um, Cornell notes. Um, I will see you on the next video. Thank you for watching um, and take care of yourself guys.